This is the new Revel Point Mini 3D Scanner, and it's not your typical budget 3D scanner, because this one can actually scan small objects and get good details from them. So I'm going to run it through its paces and see what it can and can't do. So let's get started. And just so you know, this is an early access unit sent to me from Revel Point, and as I'm making this video, it is still on Kickstarter. But anyways, it comes with a nice new tripod, and it has these tiny little feet at the bottom that actually have extendable legs. And for a comparison, here is the POP2 3D scanner next to the Mini. And as you can see, there's a major difference between the two. And not only when it comes to the size, seeing that this new one uses a blue laser light to scan things, compared to the POP2 using infrared light. The scanner does come with a small bus that you can scan, and it's definitely quite a bit smaller than the one that came with the POP2. So I'm just going to use the supplied rotary table and see how this scans. So now in the software, which is the same as the one that you use for the POP2, I'm just going to push the play button and it should start scanning. And then once it's done a full rotation, I just push stop. And after that, I get this prompt, which I need to switch this off so I can go change a setting. I was told by Revel Point to switch the point pitch to 0.02. And honestly, I have no idea what this does. I'm just doing what they said, basically. But anyways, with that done, I can fuse all the points. And after a couple seconds, I can take a look at the scan, which looks really good for just being a single scan. And if I zoom in, you can see every individual point, which is insane how many there are. But we need more scans, so I'm going to reposition the model and start another scan. And once it starts, it should automatically align everything and start the scan. And then the same thing as before, I'm going to stop it after one rotation and then fuse all of the point cloud. And then I'm just going to reposition this and scan it from different angles until I have a fully finished model. And there we go, it is completely done, and now I just need to turn it into a solid mesh. And you do that here, and the settings are already set to what they should be. And then just click the little triangle part, and this does take a bit of time to finish. But anyways, here it is. And it looks like it came out really good, and it picked up almost every detail on this thing, even like the little flaws of where there was bubbles or little missing points. And this can be exported in different file formats, and I'm going to turn it into an STL so I can 3D print it. I'm going to use some glow-in-the-dark filament from Ceramic, mostly because I want to try out this filament and I think it would look cool being able to glow in the dark. And when it comes to the printer, I'm going to be using my Flash Forge Adventure 4. Oh, and if you want to check out this file for yourself, I will have a link to it in the description below so you can download it and do whatever you want with it. And after removing the supports, it looks like this came out really nice. And of course, here it is next to the original one. And if I turn the lights off, you can see that it glows. And it looks like it came out almost a perfect copy. But this is like the perfect thing to scan with these scanners. So let's try something else. So I'm going to try a miniature that I've scanned with every scanner I have, along with this light slash reflector. And this light is way too shiny to be scanned. So I'm going to have to use a 3D scanning spray on this. And I've already taped off the hole in the back so I don't get any of that spray inside of it. This is a spray I like to use whenever I'm scanning things, mostly because it gets great coverage and it dissolves on its own within four hours, so you don't have to clean it up. But it's also very expensive, so if you're able to wash off the piece, I suggest using something like this. Honestly, it's not as good, but it will get the job done. And you're going to want to use stuff like this on things that are really reflective or shiny, along with being too dark of an object that it has a hard time picking it up. And as you can see, it leaves a really nice matte finish on whatever you spray it on. With that being said, you have to be careful when handling this though, because it does wipe off really easily. But anyways, I was able to use this in a handheld mode to scan this entire piece with multiple scans. And I was able to get this whole thing to scan really well, and it looks like the only problem it had is with the holes, which are easy enough to fix. And when it comes to scanning the miniature, I did have some problems at first. After the first initial scan and repositioning the model, it would not realign it, it couldn't figure out where it was. And I restarted my scan and tried different things over and over again and nothing was helping. And then in the preview window, I realized that there was something weird going on. The lighting was flashing. And this is something that the lighting in my room causes on recordings. So I just turned off all my lights and tried again. And everything worked as it should. And I was able to get this really good scan of this miniature. And just so you can see the difference, here's the best POP2 scan I can get of the same model. So a really big difference. And I wanted to see how this would fare against my $6,000 3D scanner, and it's not too far off. It's not as good, obviously, but it is pretty close, especially with this scanner being a fraction of the cost. So that's actually really surprising to me and good to know. 
but this scanner can also scan larger objects. And for larger stuff, you can use little markers that come with the scanner, so it has reference points to actually scan. I'm also going to spray this because this is a clear object and I want to be able to actually pick it up in the scan. And I haven't mentioned this yet, but you can use this mobily. As long as you have a battery pack to power the scanner and a smartphone to connect to either over Wi-Fi or the cable, you're able to scan anywhere you want. And it was able to scan this area really well and pretty quick. And just keep in mind, this won't work too well in direct harsh sunlight. And here's a result from the scan on my phone. And you can see it picked up all the details like the chipped paint and every one of those little stickers, along with the overall lens shape that I wanted for the headlight. So this has been a pretty well-rounded 3D scanner, being able to get pretty good details from small objects along with larger objects. Granted, the scans are not going to be perfect, and you're not going to have these super high details like the more expensive scanners, but these are totally workable. And with just a little 3D design skills, you will be able to use these to save hours of time making things. Or it can help you reverse engineer or make new parts for stuff. So to sum everything up, this is an awesome budget 3D scanner that you can use for hobbies or actual professional work. But with that said, this is a Kickstarter campaign, meaning that nothing is guaranteed. Looking at Rebel Point's track record and the product I have in my hands now, it looks like a pretty much done deal. But at the end of the day, it's going to be all up to you. I'm just sharing my opinions and my experience with this particular scanner. I'll have links to everything I showed in this video in the description below. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. Well, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.